Hello everyone. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello everybody. Hello and welcome to another vlog. Um, two loons. La Trek. Hey, you got it right, though. La Trek. Look, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> um, we're going on the Monarch's Way. Mm. There's the Monarch's Way. Fine for it, doesn't it? At the moment. And this is. Um, this we're is. See where we are. In, yeah. Within in the region. Oh, we're we've in. Got the um, sign there. Where are we? Well, we're just away from Yanworth. This is Yanworth in yes. the Cotswolds. So this is the Cotswolds. Yeah, just said the Cotswolds. Or is it Gloucestershire? No, it's Cotswolds. But it's not far from Gloucestershire. Well, Gloucestershire's just further on, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to go up to see a, a lovely Roman villa. Mm. Are we uh, going to give much away at the minute? Well, you'll find out when, when, when you we come get along, there. When we get there. Yeah. So... It's um, it's called Chedworth, by the way, Chedworth Roman Villa, mm. and you'll find this um, vlog on our uh, new channel, new channel, uh, our National Trust playlist. Oh yeah, because there are a few on there, aren't there? Yeah, so it's yeah. on our National Trust playlist. I need to s just straighten the camera a bit there. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, when we get there, got traffic. You can. Uh, let me show you what we can see. We're just waiting for the traffic to go. No more. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it's a steep brew. This. It is. Go on up room, spit for your bobbock suggies. You don't know what that means, Kath. Well, somebody might be intuitive enough to go away and find us. Intuitive? <laughs> what did you think of the drive up here, Kath? Well, it was lovely. Well, the landscape was really interesting. Yeah. Because we haven't really explored the Cotswolds much, have we? No. But, um... So, it's very, um... Get my breath back. Very undulating and rural and very soft. It's soft, very soft Wiltshire landscape. countryside. Yeah. And it's Easter it's Sunday, beautiful. isn't it? It is Easter Sunday. And we've led ourselves into a little um, sense of it's not busy when we, it is. When we parked at the. Because <laughs> when we parked down there, it seems that there's not many here. On oh. the Easter Sunday. But look at these. Tons of traffic? Uh, I don't think so, Kath. I don't think it's that busy. Yeah. There's a pheasant. It's busy enough. So, do you know what? I've wanted to come here for a long time. What, to the Roman villa? Yeah. Now, you know this one? And we'll just give an inkling of information until we get there which is just here yeah um is that this isn't the only villa site around this region there's at least you've identified at least 14 others 14 others but they don't know of what standard so it's a oh. few miles okay. north of Sirencester, yeah. which is the roman town of Sirencester. Mm. um so this would have been the um the outlying regions, what did he call them today? Urban... Districts. Boundaries. Middle class. Oh, oh up, damn. Up, the wealthy, wealthy <laughs> district. Yeah. So all these villas would have been there. Well, the, the focus mainly in the southeast of England anyway, so it would have been a huge settlement. Right these across, Roman villas. Yeah. Yeah. Right across the southeast until they were uh, brought out of Britain in 410 AD, the Romans. There you go. Swallowed a Wikipedia. Listen, because I am interested in history. Let me tell and you something. Facts. If you watch the time team. <laughs> Come to me. Right. <laughs> and you like Professor Alice Roberts. Yeah. And. Uh, when she's digging up the earth. No, but what about old Tony Robinson? You're going to love this vlog. 
Yeah, so, so there's lots of facts in this. Yeah, so we're going to go in here now. <laughs> so we start at the start. 362 Yeah, that looks, um, seems a long time after the Romans went, didn't it? Didn't they go at, um, oh no, it's 4, 410. 410. 410. So it was at the end of the Roman period in Britain. Then we have 1066, and then we have 1509. And which 1864. Is, it's a long way, isn't it, between... 1066 and 1509 is when but that's how you history is divided and 1864 again villa was discovered and excavated by tony robinson <laughs> of the time team james farrer james victorian archaeologist 1924 it's taken over by the national trust who gave it to the national trust i'm talking about facts here Phil. yeah it was, um, what was his name? Who gave it to the National Trust. Saint Wilborn St. Clair John Badley. Lennon. Wilborn St. Clair Badley. Badley. He raised funds to uh, sponsorship of the site and then that was given to the National Trust in 1924. All right. And they've managed it ever since and they're still finding um, new late floors and other artifacts and various other things even today it's brilliant isn't it in 1509 when henry the eighth was on the crown the villa was laid forgotten yeah he didn't even know yeah. about it didn't even know yeah. it was here in william conqueror's time 1066 it was in ruins yeah so people knew it of it but it was just a ruin well when when they unearthed it when they discovered it um they only they excavated a lot of it, but what they did is they showed a very small amount to the public and they reburied the rest. Oh, I see. So it wasn't until 1924 Four, that it was fully uncovered yeah, and it restored was fully in, uncovered in some respect. To what there is now. And in AD 362, it was one of Britain's finest Roman villas. Yep. So this is a reconstruction of what the villa would have looked like. So we're here on the site. It's like entering Pompeii, isn't it? It is a little bit, yeah. It's kind of like that. I don't know, it's not as big as Pompeii, is it? Latrine, no. It's just a, a real it's a block, isn't it, I suppose? Is it what you expected, Kat? Well, I've not been round it yet, so I don't know. We could, we could have got earphones to go round. That explains the site for you. Well, you can do reading for that. I mean, did she offer them or? No, she didn't offer them. Oh, that's a I've just seen it. Oh yeah, it's got a, a rundown on it. Yeah. It's a lovely afternoon. Oh yeah. Very short people at Tedworth. Um, 
and that then living underneath. Like. <laughs> Obviously, we have got tiny roofs on some of the walls, so yeah. that's not the case. This is a hypercost. Ah, so this is it, yeah. So this is yeah. a Pile hypercost. Um, if you've been in the West Range, you would have seen the stacks of tiles. Right, not yet. Yeah, no, we, no, we haven't been ah, there yet. When you go in there, you'll see them this, and you'll be like, this is a this Pile is hypercost. It. Right. Yeah. So on top of this would have been flagstones a and then a mosaic jet. floor. Right. And the hot air would have circulated. So it wouldn't have been a sauna. We thought it, it would have been a dry We sauna, thought it might be just some just kind of in the floor bath house, heating. Yeah. So um, this would have been more of a dining area. So ah, in right. the bathhouse, you would have wanted it. Interesting, yeah. when you go in there, you'll notice it's stacks of tiles. Okay. And the reason it's stacks of tiles is it, it means that there's more surface area coming in contact, so it gets hotter. Ah, of course, the yeah. Stone pillars yeah. aren't getting, so they're controlling the temperature. Yeah. By what material they're using. Wow. It's really clever. They also have another type of hypercourse called a channeled hypercourse. Right. When you go into the triclinium, which is the dining room, you'll mm. see that instead of Pile, yeah. we've got sort of um, channels between okay. a stone flooring. Right. So again, because they don't want it too hot, yeah. the only problem with that is then you end up with cold spots. Right. So, you, so yeah. you've got all different yeah. types. So we've got Pile hypercost in stone, we've got yeah. Pile hypercost in tiles, in and tiles. then we've got the channeled hypercost. Wow. All of them. Well, it's amazing. It's, it's fascinating that, isn't it? The way they've done it. It's decent well, structure. And yeah. just from, you know, these Pile, um, yeah. And that they're able, they know that by using tiles, it's going to get hotter. Yeah, it's very yeah. clever. Very clever indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. Can I just? There we go. Yeah. Like, sight guide, Gemma. Sight guide. It was very good. Okay. Oh, well, lovely to see <laughs> you. Lovely lovely to speak to you. Oh, wasn't she well, that lovely? Was informative, yeah. I like. She that. told us everything we need to know better than an audio guide, I think. Especially about the underground flooring and the heating. Yeah. Sorry, and I was about wondering about the um, yeah. Roman snails. Yeah. And the snails. Yeah. Yeah. Very well, that was great. Rooms with recesses. Looks like drains. What a lovely day to spend a day in ruins, in ruination. Food or drink. Mosaics. Steam baths. Changing room. Cold room. It's a plunge bath. Is it how you expected it to be? Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, really. No, I wasn't. 
It's very interesting. Mm. It's something that you'd expect in Rome or well, through Europe, yeah. Pompeii or yeah. something. I suppose it is like the British Pompeii, isn't it? Mm. It's great if you're interested in floor art. Mosaics, particularly. Mm. That concludes our visit to Chatworth Roman Villa. No. Chedworth. Chedworth. You're thinking of Chatworth House. I am. No, it was Villa. interesting though, wasn't it? I found it very interesting. Nearly 2,000 years old, that yeah. house. And weren't the uh, guides really... Oh, the gu guides were brilliant. They were, weren't they? Yeah, they were. I think I thought Gemma, I don't know if she's paid staff or a volunteer, I'm not sure, or student. Yes. Um, but she was very knowledgeable, wasn't she? She was. As, particularly on the Roman style. Yeah. Nearly 2,000 years old. And it is. Uh, those villas, by the way, the Chedworth one is, is, is um, it's a, it was a wealthy villa. And it was. The, the reason you can see that from what was on the site is that they've got um, very highly skilled mosaics. So they yeah. would have had to have some financial stability or wealth to actually employ people to come in and do that and sometimes they used real gemstones did it or you know tiling that would fit into the yeah. design see that's the reason we brought you here today is, is to show you that there are places in britain that yeah. were some fantastic roman floor art where you can find that some of the best in europe mm. in britain now that stood uncovered for many many years after the romans uh, were brought out of Britain in 410 AD yeah. and they were in the prime and like we were talking to Gemma they were they were transitioning from the towns and making their home life and well-being more yeah. um, healthy and productive they so they started installing you know baths in the villa and uh, just making it really more as a personal experience yeah. wasn't it um, uh, and then they used to do business in the baths as well, in the villa, where they'd meet and talk about, you know, finance of the day and whatever they were doing. Yeah. But um, that was then uncovered, that had stood. Because if you think that was left in 410 AD. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until 1864 when James Farrer discovered it. Yeah. A gamekeeper to, I think it was Lord Eldon's estate, wasn't it? Yeah and he was also um, interested in archaeology and they, they discovered the site yeah. and um, they excavated with a team part of the area and I think Lord Eldon paid for the excavations Yeah. and they unveiled this wonderful Roman villa they one did. of its one of the best in Britain yeah it is it's incredible here. I've wanted to come here for a while. Now, if you want to come here, by the way, it's owned by the National Trust mm. and um, uh, you have to pay to get in, mm. uh, which is obvious because uh, the National Trust is a charity. Well, unless, you have to unless you're a properties. member. And um, the, uh, the best way to see these properties is by, by becoming a member. Because mm. you get more value for your money. You get which more we happen to be. Dollars for you. What is it? Books for your dollars? Thanks for your books. Thanks for your books. So... That's the best way to do it, isn't it? Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, it's the cheapest way and you can travel the country. But also, if you're coming into this section of uh, the Wiltshire, UK, southeast, was where predominantly there's, there's something like um, oh, look. 14 villa sites, isn't there, around the area? Oh, hello. There's New Road Cottage. There's a lovely guard dog. Isn't that lovely? Isn't he beautiful? And there's free range eggs for sale. Oh yes, eggs are one pound twenty, Kath. Okay. Free range eggs. I think we've got eggs still. Okay, just yeah. telling you. But look, isn't he beautiful? There's a lovely doggy. Said hello. You have got two lots, actually. So, um, Sorry, yeah. Sorry, would have got them otherwise. 
yeah, join the National Trust and come along. But they're, they're great anyway, these places. They're usually places that you seek out that you normally wouldn't visit. And, uh, and people you know, don't know much about, do they? The Trust have been caring and maintaining this site since 1924. They have. When another archaeologist raised money to salvage the villa area. Yeah. And uh, gave it to the Trust. And manage. we're big fans of the National Trust. Since 1924. A right and good old socialist today? organisation. Who did we meet today? Power to the people, giving land back to the people, ordinary yeah. people, to be able to visit these places. Yeah. Fantastic. It is. It is, isn't it? Fabulous. Who did we meet today? We met a doctor. Dr Quintus. Dr Quintus, who, sh he, oh, that, who showed that, us all about yeah, Roman doctoring. All, all the herbs and uh, medicinal usages for those herbs that they would have used yeah and wasn't it interesting that that toolkit he had yeah that were used from anything from removing cataracts to removing hemorrhoids yeah all sorts of things teeth everything yeah. they they were modeled on the original set that was found in pompeii yeah he even had a special set of tools for mutant women who were they then i don't know okay. but have you seen in stephen cronenberg's film <laughs> That's a quote from a film by Stephen Cronenberg. I, I suggest you watch it. Yeah. Anyway. I suggest you don't bother. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've enjoyed it. Mm. We, we are two loons. La Trek. La Trek. La, no, do it again. We are two loons. We'll get this right if it kills me. We Let's, are. We are. Excuse me. Go on. I'll do, do it again. <laughs> Go on. We are two loons. La Trek. And then you sh keep stum. I keep stum and say, uh, subscribe to the page, give us a thumbs up for this video, make like a comment, share. share it on your social media. Uh, we are a new channel, we haven't got many subscribers, but if you're our ring one bell, viewer, but ring the bell. If you're our one viewer, stick with us because mm. we've got some great videos coming and we'll up. We'll stick like glue with you. We'll stick with you. We'll support you all the way in your watching facilitation and presentation and presentation so the finest content yes thanks for watching <laughs> and we'll see you soon in our next video which will not be here